what is up guys this is Steve from get game smart uh, back with another TFT VOD review if you guys have been enjoying these videos please like and subscribe it really helps support the channel uh, and also let me know if you guys like the format of today's video we're gonna be trying something a little bit new where rather than cutting out the dead air time from the video I'm actually just going to be playing uh, the whole clip fast forward so uh, let me know if it's too fast, if it's too slow, if you prefer the, the other format of videos. Uh, let me know in the comments down below, and let's hop into the video, guys. Alright, here we are in the VOD review, guys. Uh, unfortunately, we did not win the carousel, ended up with a chain vest. Chain vest has kind of been my, my second, like, my safe, my safe second pick. Um, when I don't necessarily get the, the option I was looking at, which is usually crit glove or a bow or a rod or sword. Um, but yeah, chain vest is, is not a bad start either. Anyways, I'm going to be trying something a little bit different with the videos today, where uh, it's going to be played a bit quicker than usual, about 1.4 times speed, um, rather than cutting out the parts at the end of... Uh, rounds and such too in order to, they're, they're both going to achieve the same effect of essentially compressing the games down to about 20 to 22 minutes depending on how long the game goes um this one's actually compressed down even shorter than that uh but yeah let me know if this is too difficult to follow and yeah let, let, let me know it down in the comments guys if you guys like this if you guys are okay with this style it's a lot easier to edit and format uh, but at the same time, I do not want to sacrifice content uh, just to make things easy. So we are following our advice of picking up one of our early uh, early chosens. We've got the Divine Nasus. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, guys. Just play something that, that works for you um, and that, that you're given early. It, it's really important during Stage 2 to get a chosen uh, on, on the field. It's more important to have one on the field than to have the perfect one. And yeah, we, we've got a pretty pretty strong opening board. Zed is a really strong unit in stage two, guys. Um, just in, in the early game, Zed does a lot of work. Uh, he'll get to a backline carry, take it out. Like a lot of people run sharpshooters early on, so it's really good against them. Uh, you'll see my scouting here. I'm just making sure, like I've got my Zed on the side that the majority of players have a, a backline carry on the same side. So here he's gonna go and um, make short work of the Siver. Uh, and yeah, then go and, and join the rest of the rest of his friends in taking down this big Tom Kench. Um, yeah, early game guys, a lot of people are overlooking the champion of Zed. Uh, Janna as well is a really strong two cost to squeak in. Uh, yeah, our, our, our board's looking really strong here, and we definitely should be continuing to try to win streak. Um, I, I would like to see an item slammed, but I understand why I actually didn't slam one in this case. The only item I could possibly slam is a shroud, like, or QSS. Yeah, I should at least be getting the components down. That's, that's good to see. Um, e even if you don't want to use your items, you should... Try and at least get the components down on people you're gonna sell, or, or uh, like put the items where you think they might go. Uh, unfortunately, we have the the curse of first on the carousel, and uh, we're probably not gonna get anything good to uh, add on to add on to our our bit of a mishmash of of units. Um, so I I've taken to playing a really like always playing my strongest board in stage two. Um, and that usually means I have pretty, pretty bad items. Uh, we're quite fortunate in that we get a, a giant spelt here so that we can slam that onto our uh, Nautilus. So we have a Sunfire Cape. Um, yeah, I was going to say we should either keep him out there or we need to get that onto somebody else. Garen is an okay holder for a Sunfire. I, I'm not too excited about dropping it on him. Um, but at the same time, I'm, I'm playing four divine now, so I'm thinking uh, this Garen might not really fit in. I'm, I'm no longer going the Vanguard route. Um, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully we can get the Sunfire off of the Garen at some point. But for now, it's a, a, it's a pretty worthwhile item holder. Um, and as always, it's more important to have an item on the field than on your bench. So uh, 
yeah, we're, we are doing a bit of scouting between rounds. We, we were, were, were able to clean up, though, um, and we're continuing the, the win streak. So we need one more to make it worthwhile. Uh, so we're now looking at the other boards that are strong. I'm looking at people that may have just uh, hit something or whatever and making sure that we're, we're feeling pretty confident to uh, go into this next round. And again, our positioning is pretty good here. Unfortunately, we do get stuck on this Tom Kench for, for quite a while, but we are able to secure the win streak and 20 econ. Like we're in a really good spot here. Um, and I didn't have to do anything that fancy. Uh, and I didn't also get that lucky either. So uh, if you're having trouble win streaking in the early games, your, your biggest problem is probably that you're not slamming components. Like that Sunfire really carried me through a, l a lot of those um, post carousel rounds. So if you're if you're having tr pro problems win streaking, definitely definitely look to be getting your components and items on the board early, especially like like high platinum plus you definitely can't be expecting to win streak like you, you can't really expect to win items if you don't have uh sorry you can't expect to win any rounds if you don't have items on the board um and that starts at 2-1 so we do get the uh golden orb there it gives us an olaf and a uh aurelian soul here and this is pretty interesting because my items are objectively bad um, I could slam a chalice here and I, I am playing with this idea of, of forcing mages or, or at least fitting mages in right now or uh, maybe the, the correct call would actually be getting dragon soul buff in there right now um, but this is really early to have an a soul guys at level 6 here I, I've even got a talent in my shop which is kind of wild um, just because it's, it's quite a high roll uh, but yeah it's a uh, it's definitely giving me a lot of options and I do view myself as a flex player and I'm playing in a lower elo here. This was uh, during the, the period of time where I had just been absolutely inting. I was down in platinum. So um, this is in fact a game of me smurfing on a full full platinum lobby. Um, platinum ones and twos mainly. I think a few platinum threes and four. There will be a screenshot beforehand. I'm sure you've seen it. Uh, but yeah, so this is we'll call it a, a flex player smurfs on platinum lobby something like that there's your there's your boiler tag nameplate um <laughs> because i stay flexible in this game for longer than is necessary longer than i should have been able to get away with uh yeah yeah i, I i'm basically torn between mages and slayers uh, up until the point where the the game's already over um, but at this point I, I am leaning towards the mages just because I can get it in like ASOL casting like a level 1 ASOL casting even without items casting twice kills everything that isn't a front line basically um, so it's it's pretty good actually this 2 star Callista is going to absolutely destroy us 2 star Callista with the rune ends is one of the most stable boards like 6, six cultists with 2 star Callista with a rune ends is like really stable through round 4 honestly um, so that guy's well ahead of the curve. Again, not likely going to be getting any good items uh, from this carousel. That's that's like the worst part about playing with uh, while wind streaking, is that you don't get any good items. So if your items are really bad, it can feel really bad. And this is actually an issue I'm running into. Uh, I've climbed up a little bit from, like, since since this gameplay was recorded, and I'm now hanging around high diamond three, low diamond two, um, and I'm I'm having real issues now where I win streak early, but if I don't keep that win streak for like ten plus rounds, I'm not able to top four because my items are so bad um, that I feel like I'm hitting with like a wet noodle come round five kind of thing. Uh, yeah, and, and people are just able to build stronger boards more consistently, so it's it's definitely difficult. Uh, definitely going to have to continue to do these VOD reviews and things like that in order to continue to critique my play, um, audit my play style, and uh, just make track of the mistakes I'm making. So one of the things I wanted 
to kind of get to the bottom of here was was when where what the where should I have transitioned like where should I have sold either the a soul or the Olaf or I guess the the real play is I probably should have honestly just played six dragon soul like I get this really juicy dragon soul Shivana and I'm like okay I can't really pass this up um, I need something to to keep my board strong unless I wanted to just go into a full free fall right now which wouldn't would, would also be a play to like lose four consecutive and then go into carousel and try and get an item maybe maybe that could have been a play but I was uh, really focused on preserving HP that's kind of the mindset I have had playing the game lately um, because I feel like everyone's playing really aggressive at the end of season is just like not going out early um, to make sure I don't have any more seventh or eighths but I guess sometimes they're inevitable still anyways it's uh yeah I think I, I, I think the conclusion that I am coming to for this game is that Dragon Soul would have been a play and I should have leaned harder into it right now because right now I'm still uh, rather undecided I'm hoarding both mages and slayers on my bench to some degree um, I'm looking at the adept front line I'm looking at the vanguard front line uh, yeah I, I, I'm really playing everything right now and it's while, while it's worked up until now stage four is usually where people start to really hit so I imagine the compositions that we're going to be playing against now yeah here it is are going to uh, be a bit stronger and yeah yeah so one issue I have noticed with my playstyle is that I have not been rolling down on level seven and that's really greedy four one is when uh, the damage from losing rounds really starts to hurt uh, so I think I I should have I should have rolled down at level uh, at four one there at level seven um, Oh man, and now I'm just like playing without a chosen. This is so bad. Why did I sell my that Shivana chosen if I wasn't going to commit to rolling for uh, another one? That, that that's another question I have to ask myself, and something that you definitely shouldn't do, guys. You cannot really afford to play round four without a chosen. Uh, I've actually noticed a pretty common thing that I end up doing, and it's so bad. Like it's. But hey, this is um, this is why we do these VOD reviews is, well, I, I hope in part to uh, share some of my wisdom that I've been fortunate to learn through a couple hundred games this season, um, but also to uh, improve my own playstyle and, and really highlight that you, you can get and achieve high ranks in the ladder uh, without being very good at this game and I, I'm not sure what that says about the game uh, like like I, I, I obviously have accumulated a, a fair amount of game knowledge and that's really what I want to share with you with guys on the get game smart channel um, but mechanically I'm still making a ton of mistakes in this game um, whether it's like <laughs> it, it, like uh, switch outs and, and uh, transitions are, are huge like roll downs I miss a lot of roll downs I miss making eco at the end of rounds like I make a, a ton of mistakes and I'm currently sitting at diamond two on the NA ladder so um, all I'm saying is that this game is more about game knowledge than it is about uh, anything else at, at least until you're up into the 99th percentile of the game so finally we, uh, we get a bit of more solid direction here with the Slayer Chosen Olaf. Um, really hard to pass this up, so I guess my greeting, my greeting was worth it th playing till 4-5 without a Chosen? I don't think so. I lost about 30 health in like 4 rounds or something. And yeah, that, that would have just made this game a lot more comfortable. Again, I'm getting away with it because some of the boards I'm playing against aren't particularly strong. This was a, a full platinum lobby, and I'm I'm used to playing a bit higher. Um, but yeah, this is a uh, this is what it takes to get to diamond, guys. It's not about being the best. It is just about having game knowledge and knowing kind of what boards should look like towards the end of games. 
And here we ac actually hit the Samira and are now able to get the six Slayers in. We've finally sold off our Aurelian Soul. Um, and yeah, so it's not until the end of round four that we're, we're actually committed to this Slayer uh, build. Unfortunately, we're lacking an, an I, not an IE, a, a Last Whisper, uh, which would be really beneficial in playing against this super, super strong uh, Nico Vanguard player. Fortunately, we, uh, we are able to just brute force it down. Um, Olaf is really good, guys. Chosen Olaf is even better. Uh, just got the Hodge and, and Guardian Angel on him last right now. Um, you don't need much more than that, but uh, a Runans would definitely be nice. A Deathblade would also be a nice item. Um, God, okay, so the other major mistake I've made, other than uh, not rolling down, is not slamming these items. So um, I was win streaking in first, and I did have really bad items, so I didn't want to slam items early. But at some point in round four, I imagine I could have gotten away with slamming a few more of these items. And I mean, to some degree, it's kind of worked out because we have pretty good items. We've got the Hodges and GAs on, on two of our Slayer carries, which are, are obviously great items for them. But they're obviously really flexible items too, and would have worked in either the Mage or the Slayer build. So at some point, you have to ask yourself, uh, same with the jeweled gauntlet, like I'm slamming all of these items after the fact that could have been used in both of the builds I was flexing, and that in and of itself is is a blunder, right? It's like, it's like I actually gained no value from not slamming those items. Usually you're saying, okay, I'm greeting, I'm not going to play those items uh, because I'm going to have the benefit of playing other items in the future. Well, hey, these were kind of my best case items, and just like given what I had to work with, um, so I should have just been slamming them as I went. So uh, that's that's another play that just like again you can get away with up until platinum and, and try and win streak or or duo like win streak through the early game, etc. But uh, at the, at the higher level, definitely I can't get away with that anymore, and I'm going to need to be slamming my items almost as soon as I get them, kind of thing is what it comes down to. Oof, Gold Collector Olaf, here it is guys. Gold Collector is one of the best items on Olaf. Um, anytime you're going to have a champion or a carry that's going to be doing a lot of your heavy lifting, uh, especially if they have an area of effect um, damage ability, then Gold Collector is going to be a good time. So Gold Collector, every time uh, an enemy is below 10% and the unit holding it does damage to it, uh, it executes them, which of course is great um, and does a ton of damage in and of its own. Uh, but it also gives you one gold coin. So if you get this early enough, like I'm getting it at 5-3, which is a little bit late. If you get a super early Orn off of Carousel or something, and you get this item and you're, you're running it through all of round four, you are going to have so much income. Like Olaf can generate like six gold per round sort of thing by himself. So um, yeah, definitely, definitely pretty busted item on him. Uh, not only for the damage increase it does, but uh, for, for the amount of gold it generates as well. And Slayers is an expensive build. Um, the, the final build, I think, has like four four-cost units, like two or three five-cost units in it. Uh, it, it. It's an expensive build, so Gold Collector is definitely what allows us to, to get there, um, despite rolling down quite a bit to, to hit our comps here. Quite a bit more uh, health disparity this game compared to most, and I, I think that again just is chalked up to it being a, a fully platinum lobby opposed to a fully diamond lobby. Um, diamond lobbies are just a lot closer because everybody's doing everything they can to stay alive. A lot of platinum players I've found uh, are super greedy and will die with 20 gold kind of thing. Um, yeah, pick up an extra Orin here. Uh, an Orin 2 would be nice to accelerate the uh, speed of our artifacts, kind of realizing that level 9 might be out of reach, so doing a bit of rolling here. I, I think we either shouldn't have rolled there, or we should have and gone to level 9 after the uh, NPC round, or we should be rolling more. It doesn't make sense to be sitting at 50 gold 
this late into the game and not like un unless I'm really planning on uh, going to le level nine at the end of. Well, I guess it actually didn't matter. I bailed out by my gold collector Olaf there that got me back up to the fifty econ threshold. Um, but yeah, that's uh, typically would not have been a good play. Now I've got so much money, I should definitely be looking to go to to round nine. This I, I forgot how much of a difference this gold collector Olaf makes. It's actually crazy, guys. Uh, that that item is absolutely busted on that unit. Um, it's really good on just about anybody. Uh, I've had good success on Aurelian Soul with a gold collector, but I think it's actually better on someone like Sejuani or something or another mage. Uh, if you if you have a, a favorite unit for gold collector, uh, let me do it. Let me know it down in the comments below, because um, I think it's a really fun snowballing unit. Uh, sorry, item that uh, adds a lot of flavor to the game. Spicy, spicy flavor. Yeah, six slayer. It's uh, not the more common way to play slayers right now. Actually, the more common way to play slayers is actually the three slayer, uh, three dragon soul build. So you'll get like Shivana and A soul, or Swain and A soul, or Swain and Tristana, wh whoever. Um, in order to give your uh, Olaf the Dragon Soul buff, which does a ton of damage. Um, and then you'll run Samira, Chernomir, and uh, Olaf as your three slayers. With, again, a, a front line of either Adept or Vanguard. Um, I think Vanguard is slightly better in general, but Adept definitely have, has its moments. Uh, Adept's really good when there's a lot of like duelist players in the lobby. Um, or like spirit sharpshooter players because that reduced attack speed is really good uh, Yeah, and but I think uh, I think Vanguard is better against uh, the mage and keeper um, Meta which we're currently living in Every, every team that's remaining here is a pretty strong board. This level 2 Swain here is pretty scary looking. Uh, but the Slayers just have so much damage, and this Gold Collector Olaf is through the roof. Yeah, it's... Uh, our team is just too much to handle at this point, and... Uh, throwing out some GG well played. Hoping to get, try and drum up some more uh, traffic to the channel. Final carousel here, guys. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I think we're in a pretty good spot regardless. Uh, but we do end up picking up the Trap Claw, which is a pretty good item. Um, just making sure our Trindamir is able to uh, do a spinny little dance on their heads uninterrupted. Just doing a, a quick little reposition to make sure my Samira is in a good spot to not get stuck on the three-star Tom Kench more than anything else and, and potentially get towards the zillion in the back line there. Yeah, two-star Samira just does so much work, guys. Um, yeah, we'll definitely we'll definitely get you some, some free elo down in the lower rankings for sure. That wraps it up, guys. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. See you guys next time.